everybody and welcome to Speaking and Speech with Kiki. Uh, this is lesson number nine. Okay. Last class we talked about rhetorical questions. I hope that everybody did the reading because it really showed how you can use rhetorical questions as a tool to get your audience to actively listen, meaning if you just tell your audience something, they're listening, but a very passive listening. If you're asking your audience questions, ones they don't have to raise their hand and an actually answer, but even just phrasing it as a question changes the way they listen from passive to active. Active listening is better. It is more engaging for the audience. They feel like they're participating, which is good. If they're participating, if they're actively listening, they're more interested and more open to what you're saying. Oh, oh good. All right. All right, so hopefully you did the reading, you saw that it can be emotional, you saw that it's helpful for emphasizing. I also thought it was a great way to introduce a subject. Um, I don't know if they gave a great example. Let's see, one of their example. I, I used this last time. Why is it important to exercise our right to vote? Voting is important because blah, blah, blah. So rhetorical question. I'm not waiting for an answer. And that's my way of introducing the next thing I'm going to talk about. I thought it was good, especially if you are, you have a long list of things you want to say, many, many points, and each one of them is taking you to another visual or a new set of data that you need to introduce. Introducing it the same way every time is boring. So, after a few times of introducing things like, now we'll talk about A, now we'll talk about B, you throw in a rhetorical question, why should we care about 2017's sales? Let me tell you, here's my vision. A different way of introducing is a good way to change things up. Okay, so that was rhetorical questions. Today, I'm wearing my very fancy, I'm very happy shirt because today we're going to talk a little bit about sensitive topics, okay? Yeah, let's see, okay. Some sensitive topics are money, religion, sex, gender, death, there's a lot more, uh, but just a general idea of sensitive topics. All right, so when you uh, are first, not first learning English, but when you're learning about English, there's certain things that your teacher may have said are sensitive topics, or maybe you've talked to people and you've just realized these are sensitive topics. For example, if you're Korean, you may have asked the age of the person you're talking to, and they may have given you a strange answer like, uh, well, how old do I look? <laughs> or why do you ask? Or whatever it is. Not, not want, showing that they're, they don't want to answer. The reason is in Western society, we don't talk about age as openly. You can say, I mean, I could say I'm 37, I was born in 81, I, I'm okay with it because that's me, but in general, I, I've, also, <laughs> I've also lived in Korea for, for five years, so I'm used to being asked how old I am, I'm used to it now, but if you go to the States and you ask people for their age because Korean, I don't know about your country, but Koreans, uh, the relationship between people is very much... Uh, it's all about how old you are. If you're not similar in age, you can't really be friends because of a respect issue. And so if you're 60, I have a friend who's 60 something, 65, 
65 and I don't care he's 65. I have friends who are much younger than I am. Um, I'm 37 and he's 25, 27, 28. Anyways, the point is I have friends from different ages, different genders, transgendered. I have no problem. But, but in your country, uh, like in Korea, maybe if you're 60 and if your friend is 60 and or the person you're talking to is 60 and you are 20, that's just you have to respect what they say. You talk less. You listen more. You just say mm -hmm, yes, yes, and and that's your culture and that's fine. But that may be an issue if you're asking people what their age is because a lot of people, especially women, don't want to say how old they are. They are not comfortable with that. It's not part of Western culture. Okay, fair. So today we're going to talk about how to talk about sensitive topics. One of the sensitive topics you may have come to realize or been told religion and, or politics, people's age, people's genders, all of those things. So, first of all, I'd like to say that you sh if you do want to talk to people about um, a sensitive topic, you should ask for people's opinions. It's one way you can do it. Can I ask you something? And they'll say yes, and you say, why do why don't American women like to talk about their age? Age is a sensitive topic, but why? Why is it a sensitive topic? It, you can, uh, uh, some people might say, if you don't mind me asking you a personal question, and then you can start that way. I feel like <laughs> I feel like if you ask someone, if you can ask them a personal question, they don't necessarily feel okay saying no. So try to try to ask it a different way. Try to say, do you mind talking to me about religion? I have some questions I'd like to ask you. That's a great way to start a conversation with somebody. Do you mind telling me about Judaism? I actually don't know that much about it. Perfect. No problem. I'd be happy to answer some questions. So asking questions when talking about sensitive issues is really, really helpful. Right? Okay. And then remember when you're getting the answer, there are a few cues that you might want to know. So for example, if you say, you don't have to answer this, but how many Americans do you think actually support Donald Trump? And then the person may not want to talk about Donald Trump and they may say, well, I don't really know that much about it. Q, you can ask a different question or move to a different topic. They either don't know or don't care about this subject. Okay. You started talking about a sensitive topic like religion and you're trying to talk about this sensitive subject with this other person. So here's some tips for talking about sensitive topics. For If a foreigner asks you about a sensitive topic and you want to talk to them about it, or if you're talking to a foreigner and you're asking them about a sensitive topic, and they're saying, okay, well, this is how it is for me. What, it's, what is it like in Korea? So try to be brief. Don't go on and on about the topic because you'll get lost. Sensitive topics are sensitive because they're complicated. There's no one answer. If there was one answer, it would be solved and it wouldn't be a sensitive topic. For example, why do people believe different things? Why is that an issue? You can start saying, you know, different people believe different things and you can end up talking about something completely different. 
the war in Israel because they're related but they're very far from each other and they become more and more complicated the more you talk about them. Okay. I'm going to talk about it, I promise. Be positive. Try to be sensitive to other people's different opinions. Don't use bad language. Don't get excited about it. Don't make negative statements about other people. Don't your kind people did this to my kind of people. Just try. I, it's there's the reason that these this issues are so sensitive. There's a reason, and so it's hard to stay emotionally distant. If you're talking to an African American about race in America, they are going to get very emotional if they've experienced terrible things happen to them, to their family, to their friends. You have to stay positive and don't don't try to push them if they don't want to talk about certain things. And be specific is another piece of advice, meaning try to use questions to ask about specific topics. Just talking about religion in general will be a two-hour conversation where they talk about everything instead of more specific to what you're interested about. Try to be clear as to what did you hear and what do you think about what you heard. If you've heard about racism in America, well, what did you hear about it? If you want to talk to me about being Jewish, well, what do you already know about Jews? Something like that. Make sure to use your, to describe your feelings, to label your feelings, making I statements like, I haven't experienced racism personally, but I've heard that this and this happens. Do you know, do you feel? Be open with, your, with the way you feel, with the way you talk about your feelings. Try to use I statements, as in, this is how I feel about it, because you don't necessarily know how other people feel about it. Offer an understanding statement like, I can understand that you, as a Jewish person, might feel this way in this situation. Those, those statements can be a little bit dangerous, but if you're responding to something somebody said, so I, as a Jewish person, I say, in Korea, sometimes I feel like uh, very, very strange when people come up to me and they say, you know, oh, you're Jewish, you must be rich. That makes me very uncomfortable. So you can say, oh, I understand how you feel when somebody says that. That's just a preconceived notion about something they don't understand. So offering an understanding statement. I can understand how that feels. Remember, Saying you understand how something feels is nice, but it's not always going to be accepted. You know, if you're talking to an African American and they're talking to you about race problems that they have, you as a non-African American might not be able to understand. Just, that's, that's okay too. And last, lastly, uh, remember that when the person shows they're uncomfortable, try to change the subject to something more light. Have a subject ready in your, in your mind. Be like, okay, we're, if they're not comfortable talking about this anymore, I'm going to change the subject to something else. Or finish the conversation and say, thank you so much for talking to me about this. I know this was difficult, but it's so important for me to better understand the situation. You know, it's not easy to talk about. So, I'm wearing my happy shirt because I'm going to talk to you today about religion. <laughs>